Hi, this is Susanna Bowling and the Times Square Beat. And one of the best events of New York is happening this Wednesday through Sunday. I'm talking the second annual Rolex Central Park Horse Show. This is a place to come and watch horses compete for the Olympics and see the riders and see the horses that make up New York City. A thousands of events on every single day. I actually didn't know that Beyonce was here performing this weekend. That just goes to show. So, um, you know, I think we're doing a very good job, and I think that uh, it will gradually build over the years. And um, we're very proud of the, you know, the way that last year went off. Um, but obviously, it's going to take a few years to, to build. And like I said, it's New York City. Where there's a lot of other things going on. Um, I have to thank, you know, every sponsor that has put time into this event, especially Rolex and Land Rover. Um, Land Rover, thank you for making my son the happiest kid in the world. <laughs> and Catherine, um, without your vision for this event and everything that you've done for equestrian sport, um, I would not have had the opportunity to, to do what I did last year and to be standing here. Um, I know Mark broadcast very well last year. Uh, my doubt that the sport would, would have, whatever, be back in New York City and that we would have an event. So um, you know, this year we decided to throw a few more obstacles in your way and make sure you're really dedicated to pulling off this event. So um, you have done an amazing job so far. Hopefully um, things will not get too complicated uh, with getting here and getting people to come. But uh, we're really looking forward to it. Um, it's gonna be a fantastic week for show jumping, hunters, the Arabians now for, for all the equestrian sport. Really excited and I'm very proud to be a part of it. We are with Georgina Bloomberg. Georgina, when we think the face of equestrian in New York City, we think of you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. That's an honor. <laughs> where, where do you see your career going? Where, do you, where would you like to take it? Um, obviously, Rio will be my next goal. So that's really what we're going to be working for for the next couple of months is to be selected for that team. Uh, it's a gradual process and it takes a while to form relationships with the horse and build up a team of horses that can get you there, but that will be my next big goal. And where, are you, where can we see you this year? Where else will you be? Um, next week we head out for the Longines LA Masters, and then we'll be back here to compete at the Verizon Center in DC. Now will your father be here to see you jumping and doing what you do? He will. He'll be here on Friday night. And what is your favorite thing about the sport? Um, you know, this sport has been something that I, I've loved since I was a little child. I love the aspect of having animals in it. I've always been an animal lover. Um, so to be able to be around animals all day and then also to add in the competitive side is really um, a dream come true. Is there a favorite jump that you like doing? Every horse is different. So I would say I have different jumps that I prefer with different horses. But uh, like I said, every horse is different and every obstacle faces a new challenge. And to become an equestrian in New York City, is it, was that a hard thing to do? It was. It's obviously more of a struggle not being able to have access to barns um, as easily as uh, some of my counterparts and fellow competitors who were competing outside of the city. But um, it was something that really taught me how much I wanted to do this sport. It was more of a sacrifice and uh, more inconvenient to be trying to do the sport. So it was something that I knew that if I was going to put the time in and be commuting in and out, um, that it was something that I really wanted to do. And it taught me you know, a good work ethic. And I had to learn to do homework in the car on the way home and have less time with friends and um, less time in the city. But it taught me to really uh, decide whether I wanted to do the sport or not. And I knew that I did. Now, your son has a little Land Rover with a trailer for the horse and a horse. Do you see him taking up the sport? He does, but, you know, I think he's more interested in the Land Rover part and not so much the horse. Um, he's definitely a typical boy. He loves cars and trucks, um, and he'll, love, he'll always love animals. He'll have a good respect for them, but um, if he decides that he would like to ride, I'll be very supportive, but it'll have to be his decision. And what would you like people to take away from this horse show? Um, I think, you know, like I would said before, it's really just an amazing opportunity to see all aspects of our sport. Um, we have a little bit of everything from the Arabians to the hunters to the jumpers to a great young rider class where you're going to get to see some of the younger kids that are coming up in our sport. So I think that, you know, if you had to pack the entire equestrian sport into five days, this is just a great showcase for it. And I think that people will hopefully come and um, people who had never had access to show jumping and to hunters and to dressage will go away as fans. Mark? Bellissimo, M-A-R-K-B-E-L-L-I-S-S-I-M-O. Now, what made you bring the horse show to Central Park? You know, uh, we were looking for an opportunity to really create a, a, a world-class environment, and there's really no greater city than New York City. And so we decided that we had to figure a way to, to put it together. Central Park is so iconic in the world, um, and we thought that that would be a great location. We figured out a way to do it using uh, Woman Rank, and uh, we're able to put together a, a group of sponsors, including Rolex for the Rolex Central Park Horse Show, to, to underwrite you know, some of the event. And we just pu pulled our team together that operates some of the world's largest horse shows 
and put them together to try to create a plan to set up a horse show in four days, execute it in five, and then disassemble it in four days. So we had a very tight window to do it. Now, this year's unique because you've added part of the U.S. trials? Well, no, we, we, we created an event, um, a sub-event, if you will, called the U.S. Open for equestrian sport. And so we're just distinguishing that as an event within the Rolex Central Park Horse Show. And it will, over time, I think, become one of the top U.S. events to, to challenge uh, the, the top uh, U.S. riders uh, in this country. Now, uh, originally, the trials were held at Madison Square Gardens. So are you bringing that back? Are you trying to bring that back? Well, the, co the competition, uh, Madison Square Garden was obviously a, a different horse show because it was indoors. Um, we're really, what we're really trying to do is create an environment where we can expose a much broader audience to equestrian sport. And so this really becomes, I think, even more iconic and more interesting because if you're in an indoor venue, you really don't get the charm and the character of the area in which you're operating. Here, you, every, every turn of the camera is, is on a new portion of the skyline or trees, and, and uh, that just doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. And I think in a city like New York that is, is such a you know, major world um, city, it, uh, it takes on a, a great light to attract more and more of an audience. And part of your agenda is giving to charities. How did that come about? Well, I think we've, in, in general, our, our family's been very involved in, in, in uh, Wellington in creating a, a concept called the Great Charity Challenge, which was an opportunity to, to raise funds from the equestrian community and redistribute it back to the community. And so, um, you know, here we're trying to uh, develop a, a great opportunity to sort of take the energy and uh, philanthropy of a lot of the equestrians who are involved in the sport and redirect it back to the local community. And if you had one wish for what next year would be or the next 10 years would be, what would it be? I, th I, I hope this event really continues to, to grow, and, and I, I would love for this event to be sort of the premier event on the world circuit. And so I think we're well on our way to accomplishing that. It just takes, takes a little time and effort, and uh, we're, we're getting great re initial response, and I think we'll continue to grow over the next 10 years. As a kid already, I always loved New York and I would love to come here, but I've certainly never been here with my horse before, so it's going to be very, very exciting to ride here. I looked from, from, di from a distance on the show last year, and I think it's very, very exciting to be able to do this. And I think also it's so important for our equestrian sport to have a show like this and to promote the sport, and it's an extreme chance for us to be a part of it, and we love to do that. Uh, I'm the executive director of Gallup NYC. Uh, we're a therapeutic horseback riding program in New York City. We uh, help people with disabilities walk, talk, and learn so they can live their lives as fully and independently as possible. Uh, if you're not familiar with therapeutic riding, I'd like to mention that it's, it's almost shockingly effective. Um, one example is we have most of our, about half of our riders are on the autism spectrum. Most of them are nonverbal, and we regularly have a nonverbal child say his first words to a horse, and it's a very moving moment. So um, we also have job skills training programs, and we have people who have gotten jobs after spending time with us uh, because they've gained so many um, job skills and also confidence and uh, feel comfortable and accepted by being uh, with us. We work at five sites in New York City, we have 350 riders every week. Three of our sites are in New York City parks, and one is in a state park. Uh, we have our own horse show in Central Park. Doesn't have much <laughs> in common with this one, but it's a, a very enjoyable and exciting day. I wanted to thank the Bellissimo family and Georgina for uh, including us in this event. Um, and for offering us financial support. I'm very excited about this charitable initiative with the doll. Two-thirds of our riders don't pay our fees, can't afford to pay our fees. Um, disability can be an impoverishing uh, circumstance for a family. And so we uh, very much welcome the financial support. But we also feel that we have a mission in um, showing New Yorkers that horses are good for people. And so we, uh, we do have a horse education program where hundreds, someone mentioned, uh, you mentioned, sir, you wanted a free ride. Uh, you can come out to Prospect Park on a Saturday afternoon, meet a horse, and have an introductory lesson uh, as part of our mission to show New Yorkers how great horses are. And so we are thrilled to be part of an event um, that brings, showcases horses in New York and, and lets New York know um, how, great, how great this is. So. 
gives us an opportunity to, to really uh, touch touch base with everybody who has an interest with the horse and introduce the horse to people who have always had an interest or didn't know they had an interest um, while throwing in a charitable component, which is also very important. So thank you.